How you doing? Adam Rafferty here with a quick little guitar lesson and this is regarding thumb picking. Uh, this is some stuff that I've been practicing myself in hopes of improving my own playing and I figured I'd just put it out there and show you what I'm working on. Maybe you're interested in it and maybe you can adapt it to your own needs and it can help you boost your playing. Um, I've got a piece that I played in a concert or several concerts called Rolling with the Ashes. That's an original kind of thumb picking, boom chick kind of piece. Uh, if you're not familiar with boom chicking, it's this, it's when you have a finger style guitar piece with this going on in your thumb. And there's lots of lessons showing how to boom chick. So basically, you play a bass note and a chord, and then another bass note and a chord. In this case of a C chord, these, these bass notes work particularly well, C and G, the root and the fifth. The problem that I was having that in my own playing that I sought to solve was that um, physically, I could do it with my thumb. In the case of a concert where there was adrenaline and excitement being on stage, I found that the piece got very fast. It got much faster than when it started, and the tempo ran away from me. But that was a sign that rhythmically, I was probably overlooking something in the practice room. So I went back to the lab and I started dissecting what I was doing. And I sort of came up with this thing, four levels of boom chick, meaning four different levels of rhythm that one can practice and hopefully correct certain things in the rhythm. It looks the same. Each level physically looks the same. You wouldn't know that I was doing anything different because it's still gonna look like this basically with the thumb, but here we go. So level one is where is one and three? Uh, if we're gonna call this one, two, three, four, beats number one and three. It's the I was amazed at paying attention to my own playing to see that I was actually kind of skimping on the meat and solidity of beats one and three. So what I'd recommend to you, you can do this with a chord progression. If you don't have a full piece under your fingers at this time, or if you have a piece that you already play, cannonball rag or some kind of thumb picking piece, slow it way down. And as you play, put particular attention on one and three. So I'll just do this little chord progression. Uh, and I'm going to try to demonstrate it for you. So bumped, bumped, bumped. And as I'm playing, I'm making sure that I'm not skimping on those. So here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Boom, in my own playing, I'm paying attention to those beats. And so then level two is the sort of natural outgrowth. If the downbeat is here, boom, 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 it's boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop. That's called the perfect offbeat. So one, boom, bong, bong, one, and two, and one, and one. It's a little misleading to count with numbers, but it's the sound of that one, and two, and three, and four, and the emphasis is still on the downbeats, but that's just a certain spot in the beat that I'm now going to make sure that I'm getting. So instead of just thinking boom, 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 I'm thinking one, and two, and three, and four, and I'm 
paying particular attention to my thumb with those accents. The next thing, level three, uh, sort of up from there, this is a very subtle shift. You might not even perceive it right away, but instead of just having that as an offbeat, like one, and two, and three, and four, and, it's perceiving it like a backbeat. So I'm gonna sing a drum pattern and the two are gonna sound really different. So instead of do that, do dick, do dick, do dick, do dick, do, you have know, So it's different. Uh, it, a drummer would do something loud there instead of bont, 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 bap, doom, bap. I'll try to demonstrate. You might not hear, it might not even sound any different, but instead, that would be the level before. It would be. little different because I'm putting it's not just more weight it's a whole s different sound to that beat it's different from one and two and three and four and okay so so far that's three different ways and then the fourth way this is kind of a stretch uh, and I'll exp but I'll explain to you how the thought process that I got there with um, I thought to myself you know any kind of regular rhythm that we keep, even if it's more of like a country music sounding thing, has its roots in African rhythm. And I was thinking, what kind of other beats could I play this to or ground it with? And then suddenly I heard a car go by in New York and I heard a dance beat that sounded like this. One, two, three, four. Boom, 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 boom. And I thought, wow, you know, that, that's another kind of beat. Could I play uh, some thumb picking to that? And what I found was it put a little button on beat number four. So boom, bop, boom, bop, right there. And I started practicing some songs with that also and it grounded it in yet another way. So anyway, these are four ways without a metronome that from the inside out, I was able to listen to different parts of the beat, listen to the sounds of different fingers, and kind of realign and correct what was going on in the playing. Uh, these were things, there are things that are easily overlooked, and that if all you ever do is see a YouTube lesson on here's how you boom chick, you can get really fast at it. But to ground it with the rhythm so that your whole body is aligned to it so that your feet tap and so the audience can feel a groove. That's always my goal and my priority. Uh, so hopefully these different ways of concentrating on your own boom chick playing can realign or give you some new inspiration or correct certain things that might not be totally lined up. So anyhow, enjoy this. Enjoy picking and grooving and thanks for listening. God bless.